today on iCrime, Demolition Derby Skateboard Edition. A carjacking victim fights back. And later, a vandal on the loose. This car right here, it looks like a rock hit, hit this windshield. I'm Elizabeth Vargas, and this is iCrime. In our first video of the day, we see the shocking moment an SUV in an alleged hit and run plows through a busy street teeming with skateboarders, with the man he hit still clinging to the hood of his vehicle. It's 2017, and the city of Sao Paulo, Brazil, is hosting a major skateboarding event. It's attended by thousands. Some roads are closed off to give skateboarders the freedom to skate through the streets in peace. In the video, skaters cruise up and down Augusta Street, seemingly having a great time, until the event takes a terrifying turn. Crowds of participants are skating through an intersection when all of a sudden, a black SUV barrels through. If you look closely at the footage recorded from a nearby building, you'll notice something on the hood of the car. It's a person. Another cell phone at street level shows a skateboarder riding the hood of the wayward vehicle. Most of the windows have already been broken. As the skateboarder kicks through the windshield, several other attendees give chase. Oh, Yet another video starts just as the SUV pulls into the main thoroughfare. Almost immediately, the car is surrounded and attacked by angry skateboarders. Dr. Amanda Vickery is a social psychologist. Um, were you surprised to see how the skateboarders reacted en masse in following this car as it was plowing through this crowd? Absolutely. I mean, normally people's reaction and the smart thing to do is to run away from violence. But so many of them turned and chased the car down. And I wonder if it has something to do with how many similar incidents we have seen of this in recent years. I feel like maybe 10 or 15 years ago, if you were in a crowd of people and a car came in driving through, you might pause. You might think, are they lost? Are they confused? Whereas nowadays, we immediately think, oh no, someone's trying to run us over. And that may have been what caused them to react and realize what was going on so quickly. You're a psychologist. You're, 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 that's your expertise is to sort of get into why people do what they do. Why would a driver plow through a crowd like that? He's lucky he didn't kill somebody. Well, my guess is that was probably his intention, unfortunately. This is a an act of mass violence, just like a mass shooting, except instead of choosing a gun, he chose to use a car. And we don't know why he chose that. Maybe he didn't have access to a gun. Maybe it felt less personal. You don't have to maybe get quite as close to, to your victims or necessarily hear what's going on. Maybe he did it because it allowed for him uh, an easier escape, which worked out because to our knowledge, he he was never found and, and never arrested. One of the more harrowing parts of the video is that you see one of the skateboarders hanging on on the hood of the car as he continues plowing down this street, you know, sort of, you know, sideswiping skateboarders. He did hurt one of them quite badly. Um, is that just adrenaline from the skateboarder's part, you know, to jump on the car or land on the car and then hang on for as long as he did? Well, you know, that's a good point because skateboarders may have sort of this thrill-seeking type of personality, and that may have been what led him to, to react like that. And it's, it's interesting because normally my advice would be run the other way, get out of the situation. This may have led to why no one was killed and why more people weren't injured. According to local reports at the time, several skateboarders were injured by the runaway SUV, suffering bruises and one man suffering a broken leg. Officials say the street was closed to drivers to accommodate the event, and they are still trying to identify the driver of that SUV. Our next video features a driver whose reflexive instincts may have saved his life. 
Imagine driving on a single lane highway overpass when all of a sudden the car in front of you blocks you and a gang of thugs leap out and try to attack your vehicle. That was the reality for the truck driver in our next video recorded on his dash cam. The driver behind the wheel of this truck is on a single lane ramp merging onto a highway in Chile. He follows behind a slow moving SUV when suddenly the SUV stops in the middle of the narrow overpass for no apparent reason. The truck driver is forced to stop as well. The overpass is so narrow, it's impossible to go around. Then two men jump out of the SUV and start moving toward him, one armed with a gun. In a flash, the truck driver shifts into reverse and backs up before he then stops and floors it, smashing into the much smaller vehicle. Glass shatters from the rear windshield as the attempted carjackers head for the sides of the road to avoid being crushed. With horsepower to spare, the truck pushes the SUV hard enough and long enough to make it to the main highway where he can finally escape. In this case, there's an obvious attempted at carjacking. And if you live in an area where these things are common, you tend to know what to look for in this situation. So you can see that the, the people who are attempting to jack this guy's truck, they pulled him into what's known as a choke point. And a choke point can be whether you're in a car or you're on foot. And it's just an area that limits your movement left or right and slows you down so that they can accomplish whatever it is they're setting out to do. In this case, it looks like a one lane overpass that goes into oncoming traffic. So there, he's gonna be forced to slow down anyway, and he's got no escape routes left or right. What the driver did was, it looks like in the video, he backs up slightly, thinking that maybe he can reverse and go backwards, but you don't know how much traffic is backed up behind him. So then because he's in a bigger vehicle, he made the only obvious choice, which is to go forward. And he pushed the smaller SUV out of the way and was able to get out into the traffic and escape the situation altogether. When it comes to options, you have four in any violent encounter. And that's always gonna be avoidance, escape, de-escalation and confrontation. Now, de-escalation isn't really a factor in a situation like this where you have a carjacking. Avoidance comes with situational awareness, knowing what areas to avoid, areas where carjackings are common and things like that. This guy chose the escape option because he's already in the middle of the fight and he's got to find a way to get out of it. If you're in a smaller car and you don't think maybe you can push that one out of the way, these guys are obviously what's known as resource predators. They're in it for the item that they want to take from you, whether that be your wallet, your shoes, your car. So in 90% of the cases, if you just give that person what they want, they go away. So in a situation like that, where you're in a smaller car, you have no way to escape, be it forward, back, left or right. If you just get out of the car, get on the phone with 911, try to capture some photos or video of the license plate of the vehicle in front of you and just distance yourself as far as you can from it. You're ensuring your own safety. They'll take your car, but hopefully that can be recovered and you walk away with your life. The dash cam video helped police identify the owner of the SUV who had earlier reported it stolen. The armed suspects have so far not been arrested. Coming up, catching winks instead of speeders. Are you all right, mate? You might look good. I was just making sure you didn't have a heart attack or anything. No, all good, mate. Just falling asleep on the job. Just dropped off, mate. Ah, there you go. All right. In our next video, is it a police sting to catch drivers breaking traffic laws or just a frustrated driver bitter because he was given a ticket. In the state of New Jersey, the law states that a driver must yield to a pedestrian at a crosswalk. A recent recipient of a ticket for failing to stop for a pedestrian took to social media to voice his complaint that the ticket was actually entrapment as he attempts to expose the undercover operation. This lady has been standing at this corner, fake crossing the street for Burlington Township or Burlington County. She's been walking back and forth this whole time. I just got a ticket for failure to stop for a pedestrian. This upset driver pulls over to the side of the road after receiving a citation for entering a crosswalk while there is a pedestrian in it. And she's been randomly walking out in the street. Watch, she stops and she keeps going. The driver continues recording the woman and her unusual walking habits. 
He criticizes the woman because he believes it is causing the drivers to break the law. Watch. She's not doing anything in particular. She's just randomly walking across the street to cause issues. Those lights never flash ever any other time. Look at her. Look, see, she stops in the middle of the road and keeps going and confuses the out of people. After the woman crosses the street, the driver yells out his frustrations by accusing her of being paid by police to catch people. How much they pay you to keep walking across the street? Oh, look, she's talking in her microphone. While the man in the video claims this is entrapment, in the state of New Jersey, the act of entrapment generally occurs when a public law enforcement officer encourages a civilian to break the law. In this scenario, even if it is set up by the police, it would not be deemed entrapment because the drivers are not being encouraged to break the law. A reasonable solution to the situation? Don't enter a crosswalk when there's a pedestrian in it. It's dangerous and you will get sighted. For decades, environmental activists have performed eye-catching publicity stunts at iconic locations in hopes of sparking media attention to highlight their causes. Greenpeace has hung banners from the Christ the Redeemer monument in Brazil and over Notre Dame Cathedral in France. More recently, global warming protesters have infiltrated museums and art galleries across Europe. As we're about to see, one Italian group's civil disobedience landed them in a sticky situation. The man and woman seen here have glued the palms of their hands to the iconic Botticelli painting, Primavera, which means spring at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence, Italy. They're members of the group Ultima Generazione, or Final Generation. Their mission? Raise awareness on climate change by targeting famous works of art. The duo, each with one hand stuck to the glass shield in front of the painting, struggle to unfurl a banner with their free hands. It reads, no gas, no coal. Plenty of tourists have lined up to see the 554-year-old masterpiece, so they have an audience. <laughs> Their goal is to end the drilling of fossil fuels and promote more renewable sources of energy. As gallery visitors gather around and record the whole event on their cell phones, security arrives. Turns out the glue, thankfully, isn't super glue, and with one yank, the guard removes both the protesters' hands and drags them away. While a gallery employee gets to work cleaning the glue from the glass shield, the last generation group posts the protest to social media, declaring they're using this great work of art to convey their own message about global warming. The protesters were detained by police. They reportedly faced several charges, including defacing property and staging an unauthorized demonstration. Coming up, a rude awakening for a sleepy cop. Are you all right, mate? Yeah, mate good. I was just making sure you didn't have a heart attack or anything. No, nah, all good, mate. Just falling asleep on the job. Just, just dropped off, mate. Ah, there you go. All right. Welcome back. In our next video, a car vandal in San Francisco strikes an entire block in broad daylight literally walking down a street and swinging a sledgehammer at the windows of cars parked along the side. In recent years, San Francisco has dealt with an epidemic of car break-ins, but in this case, the vandal didn't try to break into any of the cars. He just wanted to ruin a lot of people's day. And as you can see in this video of the aftermath, he did. A resident records the long line of cars with smashed windows and an owner distraught at the damage. All right, so here we are on Lake Street. So here's one, the back uh, has been smashed. Next is a white car with a hole in the middle of its windshield. It looks like a rock hit, hit this windshield. A gray SUV has suffered several instances of damage. And then this car here, the front got a, it looks like a rock or something hit. As he reaches the end of the street, he stops to document the broken glass on the ground, explaining the local term for it. Uh, more of the uh, 
San Francisco Diamonds. So we had a whole string of cars all along Lake Street uh, hit uh, apparently overnight. Even though the vast majority of property crimes go unsolved in San Francisco, police were able to arrest a 35-year-old man in this case. He faces nine counts of felony vandalism. No answers yet on why on earth he would do this. In our final video today, a police officer in Australia was supposed to be catching speeders, only he was caught catching a few extra winks, and one amused witness pulled out his phone to record a rude awakening. All right, so I'm just on um, Narangba Road in Kalanga, and there's a spot here where an unmarked police officer normally sits, and he's sitting here right now. Looks like he's asleep in his car, and, um, I'm going to go up and make sure they didn't have a heart attack and die. In July 2016, Cameron Michael Holland spots a traffic officer nodding off in an unmarked car in Brisbane, Australia. He decides to give the napping policeman a wake-up call. There he is, passed out asleep in his car. Look at that, I could walk up here, I could smash that window and take his gun, right? So, he's asleep. Are you right, mate? Yeah, mate good, good. I was just making sure you didn't have a heart attack or anything. No, nah, all good, mate. Just falling asleep on the job. Just, just dropped off, mate. Ah, there you go. All right. Cheers, right. mate. Are you right? Yeah, no, just dropped off, mate. All right, sweet. Holland walks away, but not without a few choice words for his fellow Aussies. How's that? That's what we pay taxes for, is for the police to be doing a speed camera, but he falls asleep on the side of the road. When the video went viral, the Queensland Police Service released a statement saying that the service has a fatigue management policy in place to make sure that the risks that arise from fatigue can be identified and dealt with accordingly. Still, probably not a good idea to sneak up on a police officer when he's taking a nap. And that's it today for iCrime. We want to see your videos, so send them to us at iCrime.tv. I'm Elizabeth Vargas. Reminding you, be alert and hit record. Thank you.